Alright, hello everybody, and welcome to another video on my channel, Monsterverse TCG. Okay, once again, I don't know how to start a video. Everybody, a round of applause for me. Look, you might be noticing a bit of different scenery. Uh, I'm trying to swap around where I record my videos based on what room is the most lit. As in, what room has the most light coming into it for all you internet savants. So to start, before I get into what the title of the video says, which is explaining how to play my game, uh, also there will be a video coming out soon of how I make my actual card prototypes and how you can make your own card prototypes if you want to make your own card game. I'll teach you how to do that. So first off, to start, if you remember those four cards I showed you in the, some of the cards in my game, Monster vs. TCG, those four cards that had no art, well, I drew the art for them and I changed the one around. So to start, this is the trident. Oh, crud. Focus. So yeah, it has the little, like, it's like a pitchfork of the trident, but it has some barnacles on it. You can kind of see there. There. And then it has some, like, seaweed and moss and coral and stuff like that. Next is the typhoon vortex which is about what you expect a water tornado with some lightning. Coral necklace is just like a necklace with a gem and some coral, or it kind of looks like copper or brass. And then the other card, the Coral Symphony, I spent a long time trying to make a card that made sense, or the art made sense, but nothing worked. So instead, I named it the Oceanatic Ultra Crystal. And basically what I'm gonna be doing is for every set of cards like the Oceanatic or whatever, anything like that where there's some monster items and attachments that fit into the same category. Whenever I make a set like that, it'll, every set will have an Ultra Crystal that has the same effect where it boosts every card of that set on the field, or every monster of that set on the field with 100 extra power and defense. Also, as you may notice, there are three more cards here, which are three cards I have made, or I have made and printed out since the last video. Every time I make a video, I'll try to show the cards that haven't already been shown. And once I've finished out every card prototype, then I'll show you a complete rundown. But for now, first off, we have... I know this is turning into the last video, just bear with me here. The Lucky Shot. And it's the, it's the first card I've made that has an outside element. It says, flip a coin. If tails, this attack does nothing. If heads, your rightmost monster in play attacks your opponent's rightmost monster. Discard this card afterwards. So, to give you an example, say that you've played a Takata, and it's in your right slot, and your opponent has a Luxabix out, and you look and you say, hey, my Takata can take their Luxabix, and their Luxabix can't kill my Takata. What do you do? You take Lucky Shot, and you play it in your item slot, and I realized I forgot a coin. Be right back. You know you're the best YouTuber ever when you forget to bring things and have to run to another room to get them. But yeah, so you play it, and if I get tails, nothing happens, I discard it. But if I get heads, my Takata, which is the right, it's left. It doesn't matter, he's still the rightmost because he's the only one out. And their leftmost is their rightmost, so I still don't know the difference between right and left. Clearly school's taught me nothing. But regardless, it, my Takata will attack its Luxabix. Kind of with a free extra attack, as I have not finished playing cards and my attack phase has not started yet. I'm going to flip it, and I got Tails, so I discard it, and nothing happens. But, if I did, oh, run, if I did flip it, and get Tails again, okay, last try. If I did flip it, oh look, I got Heads. I discard the card, and then I get a freebie attack, so my Takata would attack the Luxabix. Luxabix would die, my Takata is done, I've finished playing cards, I'm in the battle phase, and then I can attack my opponent for two points. If you're wondering, well hang on, points, what are those, and why two? Give me a second, two more cards. The next card is a monster card called the Reaper, looks like that, glowing red eyes, you can kinda not see, and he only has one power and one health. You're probably thinking, why, what, why would I want to play him? Well, when this monster dies, the monster who kills it dies as well. 
I'm gonna actually make an entire separate video for all of the different uses the Reaper has, because <laughs> it's, I went on like a 30 minute tangent last night talking to someone about all the different uses of the Reaper. So, say I have the Reaper in play, and my opponent has some, like, just over the top insane combination of cards, like, I don't know, this card, this card, this card, the, 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 the this card, and, and this card, and this card. This is an overpowered combination. So, like, they have an Iceberg Titan out, which is very powerful, and a Swordfish out, making him 1900 power, and a Bottle of Fire on it, meaning it's now at 2150. Did I read that right? 1900. No, sorry, 2050. And an Ultra Crystal for the Oceanatics, which is now 2150. And a Coral Necklace, now at a lot of cards. What would that make him 2300? And the Trident for another 250 because he's Oceanatic. For a grand total of 2550 power, right? That's just. That's. What the heck? That's astonishing. Just, just to say the least, it's astonishing. It can. It, 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 it can take out anything. So, what do you do? You play the Reaper, and. If it's your turn, because that, like, say that card is out previously, you play the Reaper on your turn, and you're like, well, my Reaper has no chance against it. It, it could flatten my Reaper into a pancake that was run over by a steamroller and a tractor and a bus full of kindergartners. Okay. Anyway, what do you do? You attack it anyway, because the Reaper would attack him, and... This, even though the Iceberg Titan has um, too much defense, and the Reaper fails his attack, he dies. Not only that, the Iceberg Titan then has to attack back because he was brought, brought into combat and failed and succeeds his attack, killing the Reaper. So although, yes, your Reaper is dead, your, your opponent's Iceberg Titan both d d d killed the Reaper and your Reaper fails his attack, meaning the Reaper was killed by the Iceberg Titan, and the Iceberg Titan then dies by the Reaper's ability. So stuff like that, where I can go off on a long tangent about all of the different things you should, can, and cannot, slash should not do when playing the Reaper, because it's just such a volatile card. It can take down anything, but at the same time, I don't know. I think the only thing I thought of is that the only monster it can kill and live to tell the tale, or the only monster that could die by its hand, I guess, yeah, the only monster it could kill and live to tell the tale after the fight is if the Reaper fought something that had no power and no health, which I guarantee I will never do, because having a useless monster card is, well, useless. Last card, by the way, and then I'll get into the rules, Capture Cage. Capture Cage says, play this on one of your opponent's monsters. Take control of that monster until it dies or is captured back by your opponent. So, for example, let's say that you have that Iceberg Titan, and your opponent has a Reaper. Well, what do you want to do? You don't want to, you know, lose your awesome Iceberg Titan, so you capture. You play the capture cage on the Reaper, and now you own the Reaper. But let's say, not only that, your opponent also has a Gajax. Another very powerful card. Well, not only could your Iceberg Titan take it on and die. Actually, no, I think at that point he would live. But you don't want to be so dumb. With your Captured Reaper, you kill the Jax because of his ability. I'm not going to re-explain it. And there you go. That's all the three cards that I need. Who cares? So next, I'm going to be explaining all the different, the, the, the different rules of the game. So, this collection of cards are... All of the cards that I've made. There are technically four more, but they're in a crumpled up wad in a drawer somewhere. Because those were the four cards without the pictures. I got rid of them. So I crumpled them up in a wad and putting them in a drawer. So you have all these cards, right? I believe this is tw doing the math. 21 cards. By the way, if somebody in the comment section has, at this point has already commented that I have 21 cards now, that's dedication and studying my videos a little too much. Standard deck would probably consist of, I'd say, 36 to 60 cards. No, that's a little too much. 
about 36 to 48 cards. That seems nice. And what you do is you place your deck of cards there. Just in the... Well, if you buy... When this... If... Okay. If by the point that you're watching this video, my game has been released on the Game Crafter, then there will be the option to order a starter kit, which not only comes with two pre-made decks of cards that are both easy to learn and have their own strategies, but it will also come with a game board and a few other little collectible stuff. But assuming that's not how it happened, then just pretend that the board isn't here. Imagine that you're playing on a normal tabletop. The board just happens to not exist. So you place your deck it's somewhere. It's you place your deck somewhere, right? Probably off to the side. Then, assuming your deck has been shuffled, draw five cards and place them in a line on the side of the deck that's facing the other end of the table. Or whatever side you want. Just place the top five cards, draw them, and put them in a line. The cool thing about Monsterverse TCG, or I'm going to call it the Monsterverse, is that you don't actually hold your cards in a fan and play them by surprise. You and your opponent can see each other's cards at any given time, making the game that much harder and more stressful because you know the, all of the cards that they're going to do, but at the same time they know all of the cards, not, not do, but all the cards they have, and at the same time you know that they know that you know that they know all of the cards that you have, meaning it's kind of hard to fake each other out. So obviously you're gonna have to play some sort of strategy just to try to, I don't know, do stuff. Anyway, that's the cool thing is that you can see all of your opponent's cards and they can see all yours. They're played out like that. And how the basic turn goes is you cannot have more than five cards out at a time. So at the start of every turn, you draw a card. But if you have five cards already, you can't draw any cards. What do you do to get rid of those cards? You play cards. Now, you can play as many cards as you want per turn until you can no longer play cards, either because you've used your entire hand, or simply don't have anywhere else to play any cards. For example, if I went first, I don't care how people decide to go first, up to you, and I played a Stingray, and a Beta Box, and a Siachi, well, I can't play the Shelly anymore, because I already have three monsters out. You can't have any more than three monsters out. And I wouldn't want to play the Capture Cage, because my opponent doesn't have any monsters for me to capture, and it's stupid to capture your own monster. So, let's just take half of the deck. It's a little more than half, or actually, it's quite a lot less. But, I don't care. So your opponent has their own five cards. And a Reaper. Yikes. Ooh. That's a cool thing. Alright, I'll get to that in a second. Oh god, so they actually have six. Okay. So they have their own hand of five mismatched cards-ish. Mismatched, mis- whatever. And what do they do? Well, first, what you, what I recommend doing is before you play a monster, play a monster that can, at the bare minimum, take on and kill at least one of your opponent's monsters. In this case, all of my monsters can die from the Reaper, the Haunting Ghost, the Thermactra. Not the Luxabix, because you can't play it right now. I'll talk about that in a second. So your opponent plays the Thermactra and the Haunting Ghost. They can play two more, but... They don't want to, because they would all be just not smart moves. Now, obviously with the Haunting Ghost, any attachment cards make it so that those things with attachments can't kill it. Now, what your opponent would probably do is attack the Siachi with the Haunting Ghost. The Siachi attacks back, can't kill it, Siachi's dead. Thermactra attacks the Beta Box, Beta Box is dead, attacks back, fails. And that happens. Now... All you have is a Stingray, which, unfortunately, can't kill any of that. Though I did forget to mention, let's just undo that for a second. So yeah, that's, that's a standard turn. First turn, which I guess I'm doing now, you can't attack. On my first turn, although I could have attacked them and done some nice point scoring, I can't attack them on my very first turn, and they can't attack me on their very first turn. That's just how it goes, that way it's fair, everybody can at least do something before fights begin. It gives the person who starts a small advantage, but by the time you get into the bulk of the match, it really won't matter. So they play those cards, that's that's it, enough said. Now, it's back to me. I draw a card, and I got the lucky shot. Unfortunately, 
I don't want the Lucky Shock because Thermactor is way better than Siachi. So, what do I do? Well, I can't play any of these, and I can't play the capture, or I, yeah, I can't play the monster card because I have three monsters. I can't play the capture cage because I have three monsters, and the Lucky Shot would be a waste because even if I succeeded, I'd lose. So, I just attack. Here's an interesting thing that I decided to do with attacking. So most games, you can attack one monster with one monster. In my game, combat's a little different. Obviously, if you haven't been paying attention, you should start. So obviously, you can attack them, but then they are also going to attack you back, so it's very possible that both monsters will die. Again, bringing in strategies where you have the Reaper kill himself to kill them as well. However, not only can you attack them and have them attack you back, which you can also lure them into killing themselves. Anyway, what you'd also want to do is, or what you also can do, I should say, is have multiple monsters attack the same thing. You can, you can combine their power, but not their defense. So here's an example. Thermactor has a lot of... Um, Sorry, Thermactor has a lot of defense, 1,000. Now, Beta Box has 900 attack, not enough to kill it, it would die. And the Stingray has 350, not near enough to kill it, it would also die. But I can play a Beta Box and a Stingray, and I can have them attack the Thermactor together for a combined total of 1,250 power. That's enough to kill the Thermactra. The Thermactor, however, can kill both of them, combined even. So, it being one monster, it picks whether it wants to kill the Stingray, or beat a box, alright? And that's just your opponent's choice. If you have a combo attack, as I'm going to call them, Thermactra would automatically, or whatever is being attacked, gets to pick which one it wants to attack, um, kill, or attack. So they attack Thermactra, it dies, and it takes out my box. That's one of the cool things with the attacking system, or I think the last cool thing of the attacking system, is the fact that you can have multiple monsters attack the same thing. Also, my Siachi can't kill the Haunting Ghost. However, another thing. If you've had a combo attack, my, be my Beetle Box and Stingray attacked that, I cannot then say, oh, I'm going to have my Siachi and Stingray also attack whatever. You if something's been a part of a combo attack, or has attacked in general, it can't attack again. Once it attacks, it's done. Each monster can only attack once per turn. So you got to think, is it going to be a three one-on-ones? a two-on-one and a one-on-one, -on -one. or even, more complicatedly, these two against him. Never mind, that wouldn't work, that breaks the rules. But I can't have these two attack, those two, attack that, and then also have those two attack that. That's breaking the rules. You can't have something that's attacked attack again. <laughs> Unless, of course, side tangent, if you have a card like an item or an attachment saying, this monster can attack twice per turn, and it was on your stingray, then yeah, sure. You can have its attack with the Siachi. It failed its attack, but you can do that. Side side tangent. Um, if just this is kind of not as important because I highly doubt it would come up that often. But assuming you have a monster that can attack twice in a turn, you can have it combo with something, but it attack twice in the combo. So I could have my Stingray and my Siachi attack together, but then my Stingray attack again. Again, it still wouldn't be enough to take down the ghost, but it'd be on par, so nothing would happen. The ghost would just take out one or the other. So anyway, that's just that. So I think I've already explained blue cards, the item cards, go to the other side. So it would be like deck, hand, other sides where you'd play items. And items will always stay out on the field until either another item is played, or, unless it says, for example, this card, Lucky Shot, discard this card afterwards. Other than that, items will stay out until said otherwise, or until another is played. Let's say that the game's gone on for quite a long time, right? And, I don't know, that's all gone. That's gone too. He kept his hand, he just didn't play anything, and a magical giant hand swept everything off the board. So now I have a swordfish out, an iceberg titan with a bottle of fire. Swordfish is a trident. That's in my hand. Lucky shot somehow reappeared. It's weird. That I don't want. Blah blah blah. That's this is say I have that. And my opponent 
what the heck? My opponent played his Orbix and then killed it off to sacrifice it for the Luxivix and let that be played instead. That's why I said I'll get to that in a bit earlier, because any card, or there will be some cards that are like upgraded versions of other cards, and you can't play the upgrade until you've killed off the, the not upgraded from either your hand or the field. Anyway, let's say that that's how the game setup is. Now, how you win is complicated-ish, but not as complicated as some other games. To win, what you must do is very not-ish complicated, so-so. What you do is, if your monster, or if your monster, what? So if your opponent has three monsters out on the field, then no matter what, you have to attack one of those monsters if you're going to attack that turn. You can say, I don't want to attack, I'm going to lose, and then let your opponent wipe everything out. But whatever. But for example, here, my Iceberg Titan and my Swordfish are only two monsters, meaning I have a monster not played. I have an open monster slot. My opponent has a Luxivix and two open monster slots. What could happen is I can leave the Luxivix alone, yet still attack. Unless your opponent has three monsters out, for every monster he could or she could have out, you can attack them directly. Meaning, and this is pretty insane, I, at least I think so, you might think otherwise, whatever. So, what I find insane is the fact that, and I know I think I responded to a comment saying that it was 50 power, but I was wrong, I'll say that in a second. So, if you attack your opponent directly because they don't have all three monsters out, Every 500 damage you would deal to your opponent directly translates into a point. So if I combined 2,000 power with 700 power, no, actually, sorry, 950 power, didn't actually do anything, you know, whatever, I will be nice to myself and I'll play the Coral Necklace. 1050 power. That's a combined total of 3,050 power. Now, for every 500 power or damage you deal to your opponent, if I have him, or it, attack my opponent, and it attack my opponent, well, all of a sudden, boom, that's 3,050 damage done to my opponent, which is six 500s, I think. Yeah, 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 six 500s, meaning I gained six points, because the, I guess to say it math terms, the, the largest number or the largest number that's smaller than the actual damage I dealt, that is a multiple of 500. In this case, that number for 3,050 is 3,000. It makes no sense. I followed it, but I'm crazy. I know. Anyway, it's just, so I did 3,000 damage. Well, 3,050, but the 3,000 is all I really deal because the 50 isn't five, an extra 500, if you kind of get what I'm saying. So I just gained six points. My general rule is to win, you need 10 points if you're playing with like a 32 or less card deck, to 25 points if you're playing with like a 48 card deck. If you're playing with like 40 or 38, then I recommend whatever number between those. To try to make it so that it's around, I don't know, I guess around three cards per point. Though, saying that, I realize that would be 16 points to win for 48 cards. So, I just recommend 3 to 5 cards a point. I'd say about 5. 5 cards every point is a good number. But if it is 48, do 25. If it is only 32 or less, just do 10. Makes it a lot less complicated. So, I attacked my opponent, got 6. I have a lot less than 32 cards. Or... Yeah, 32 cards, or 36, I don't, I don't know what I said. So, I'm only going to have 10 points to win, right? So they attacked. There's no way for them to fail, because my opponent can't attack on their own. Their Luxibix attacks me. 1,000 damage, 2 points. This goes on for a while, more cards are played, but whatever. Eventually, I do come out the victor. Right here, I win. That's, that's pretty much how it works. You attack your opponent, 500 damage is a point. However many points to win, when somebody reaches or surpasses that number, they win. That's all there is to it. Unfortunately, I can't 
think of any other rules to the game. So I'm going to leave this video there. So yeah, that's some rules of the game. I'm sure there are more that I forgot, but who cares? And now I have a mess to pick up. Yay for me. All right. But no, seriously, thank you all who watched to this point in the video. I know it was yet again another very long video. They're probably going to be about this length. Some might be shorter, some might be longer. It depends. But to be honest, let me pull the chair over. Assuming you guys can see me, I'm just going to say thank you a lot. I don't think you guys can see me, but if you can, then thank you. I, I really appreciate it. Um, I don't think I have anything else to say other than that, so like, subscribe. <laughs> I guess that's it. And yeah, hope you enjoyed the, the video. Thanks for watching. I'm going to get up and walk around this monstrosity of a rig that I'm running. Same rig from last video. Ooh, that was pretty fancy of me. But yeah, thank you all for watching. It means a lot. My hands are really red for some reason. They're not actually that red. I don't know why they're looking that red. Anyway, thank you all for watching. Give it a thumbs up. A little click the subscribe button. And then the bell as well. And I will see you all later. Goodbye.